Hi everybody, my name's Kari and I'm super excited to welcome you all back to our summer series where we're learning about the Ten Commandments. Let's begin by reading the Ten Commandments together. You can go ahead and pause the video to read Exodus 20 verses 1 to 17 together. Today we're on week five of our series and we're learning about commandments six, eight, and nine. You shall not murder, you shall not steal, and you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. Now, you may be thinking that these three commandments are easy to obey, so easy to follow that they don't actually apply to us. But that's not necessarily the case. The reality is that these commandments go a lot deeper than meets the eye, which is why we're going to explore them a little bit more today. Let's start with the first one, you shall not murder. Now again, you might be thinking this one is easy to follow because taking the life of another is such an extreme that you would never even think of doing. But there is an issue of the heart at play here that actually does concern us in our everyday lives. Jesus puts it into perspective for us during his Sermon on the Mount. In Matthew 5, 21 to 22, Jesus says, You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, You shall not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Here, Jesus clearly places a lot of emphasis on anger. Now, murder doesn't just come out of nowhere. During the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is making us aware as to what is actually at work in our hearts as the cause of murder. It's anger. Jesus is saying that harbored anger is just as displeasing to God as murder, just as damaging to relationships. He knows that anger left untended is what eventually leads to murder as it begins to poison us. It poisons our judgment of people and of situations and causes us to respond in ways that may be more extreme than necessary. So yes, we may not be murdering people, but when we look deeper and at the bigger issue, we understand that this commandment may apply to us more than we thought. Jesus said that any anger against our neighbor anger that we hold on to, it causes us to be subject to judgment. But don't worry, Jesus gives us a very practical step as to how we can deal with our anger and live out this commandment. He further says in Matthew 5, 23 to 25, Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to them, and then come and offer your gift. Settle matters quickly with your adversary who is taking you to court. That's how much our anger matters to Jesus. He would tell us to literally leave our offerings at the altar to go handle a dispute or conflict with someone else. It's because he knows what anger does to us if we leave it sitting inside of us for too long. Anger left undealt with can fester and turn to poison, a poison that leads us to eventually be motivated to murder someone. Anger can cloud our judgment so much that it would cause us to remove what we believe to be the problem, to take another human life. So Jesus tells us to deal with our anger and deal with it quickly. That is how we can live out this commandment, by learning to address our anger rather than ignoring it. Now that was a lot, but we are going to jump over into our second commandment for today. You shall not steal. Again, you may be thinking, this one's easy to obey. I'm not a bank robber or a burglar. How does this apply to me? Yes, the Lord is quite plainly saying, don't be a robber or a burglar. But again, the commandment goes a lot further than that. We can learn a lot when we begin to look at the heart posture of someone who is motivated to steal in the first place. So again, we're going to take a look at the bigger picture. First of all, let's think, what causes someone to steal? Why would someone feel the need to take something that isn't theirs? If we think of the situation of a bank robber, why do you think they feel the need to steal money? And if we peel back the layers, we find that the motive most probably comes from a place of fear, a fear of the future. They fear they will not have enough money for whatever they need in the future. The fear of not having enough money in the future drives someone to take matters into their own hands to ensure that never happens. They want to ensure that they are provided for in the future, which is why they rob the bank now in the present. They want to ensure security for the future. 
So while this commandment tells us plainly that theft is not right, even just petty theft, it also causes us to further reflect upon what we believe to be true about the Lord's character and how we then live our lives. It says in Philippians 4 verse 19, And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. The Lord is our provider. This commandment challenges us to reflect on if we truly believe that. If we truly believe that God will supply all our needs, we do not need to take what is not ours. We know that God will supply everything we need. This commandment calls us as the Lord's children to trust in God as our provider, to trust that he who has supplied us with our greatest need ever, the need of a savior, to trust that this same God will also continue to provide us with whatever else we may need. Romans 8, 31 to 32 says, What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Since he did not even spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? We don't know the future, so it's a good thing we follow the one who does know it. And the one who does know the future has our best interests in mind. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. We don't need to prepare for the future in such a way where we're not trusting in the Lord to provide, where we are removing him from the equation. Rather, we want to partner with God what he is doing in us and around us so we can move with him and live full lives. We can trust in the creator of this universe to provide us with everything that we need because first of all, he knows everything we need. And secondly, he's a good, good father who cares so deeply for us and wants to see us succeed, just in like Jeremiah 29. We don't have to fear the future because we know that we are looked after by the God who loves us and who will supply our every need. Therefore, we can live out this commandment, you shall not steal, by living lives that show that we trust the Lord to provide for our every need, and by going to him first instead of trying to take matters into our own hands. Again, that was a lot, but we're going to take a step in to our third commandment for today, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. To give false testimony means to lie in any capacity. Now, straight up lying may be easy to identify in our lives, but what may prove to be more difficult to identify is the passing along of information that you may not necessarily know to be true about someone. That is gossiping or spreading rumors. But yep, that's also giving false testimony. It's not being truthful. Again, this commandment has more to it than meets the eye. In Proverbs 25, 18, it says, Like a club or a sword or a sharp arrow is one who gives false testimony against a neighbor. Just like these weapons, lying brings destruction. It destroys relationships. It destroys communities. And relationships are built on trust. And trust requires telling the truth. This commandment reveals to us how we can build strong relationships with one another. The Lord wants us to develop strong relationships with each other because he created us for a community and he knows that we need each other. He wants us to be united. In order to grow in relationship with one another and to grow as the body of Christ, we must grow in trust. And in order to grow in trust, we gotta grow in truth. So how do we do this? Again, we can find practical steps on how to live out this commandment and not just simply be obedient to it. In Ephesians 4.15, it says, Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. Here we learn that we can live out this commandment by speaking the truth in love. So this means you shouldn't just go around being so honest and, I don't like your shirt, your shorts are ugly, I don't like your shoes. But instead, we should be asking the Holy Spirit, how can I be truthful in such a way that is also loving? Being truthful with one another should come out of a place of love. If we love our neighbors, we should also not be participating in gossip or rumors, like we spoke about earlier. We should not be telling 
the little white lies because eventually those lies come between us. But instead, we should use our words to build each other up and build relationships that are founded in trust. This builds a safe atmosphere and then we can engage in conversation that is honest and maybe even addresses conflict. But it needs to be done out of a place of love. That is how we can build trust in our relationships. That is how we can live out this commandment, by speaking the truth in love. Now, wow, that was a lot. So we're going to recap the three commandments we covered today. So the three commandments, do not kill, do not steal, and do not lie. They address our anger, what we believe about the Lord's character, and how we can build trust with one another. We can be obedient to the Lord by dealing with our anger quickly, trusting in the Lord to provide our every need by going to Him first, and developing strong relationships with each other by speaking the truth out of love. Just like the rest of the Ten Commandments, these three commandments reflect the character of Jesus. In John 10.10, Jesus says, The thief comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. So as followers of Christ, we want to reflect the character of Jesus, to live the fullest life that Jesus came to give us. We can do this by living out the commandments, to not steal, to not kill, and to not destroy, but to have life and have it to the full. Amen. So now we are going to have some questions um, to discuss the things that we've learned today. Bye-bye!